Okay, and we're back. Now we're going to talk about elasticity and price elasticity on demand and how that affects. Hopefully um, you guys went through all of this. This all makes sense. Our demand curve, quantity demanded, our supply curve, equilibrium, how we came up with the prices, what um, what the surplus and shortage, this whole idea, this, this was in the last two videos. A lot of these concepts we cover the supply curve, demand curve. We have a few more to cover. And we've got some other uh, other lectures that we're going to do coming up. This is going to be the uh, series on, um, let me find this. Okay, here's, here's some other notes here. Okay, here's some of the other things we're going to go over right now. The actual uh, price elasticity of demand and how that affects what we're doing and what we're talking about. And kind of the different the functions of it, the different types of uh, demand that you want to, that we're going to deal with. To having uh, trying to navigate this thing. Okay, all right, let's get started now. Okay, so we've got a lot to do here. One of the things we were talking about earlier when I said that the uh, the part that the academic uh, world will like, disagree with me on is one of the main reasons we learn this stuff and one of the main reasons we're going over this is not so that you pass an e-contest, but so that you can learn how this works so that you can actually uh, change these variables. Okay, so here we have... We're just going to talk about our demand curve now. Let me do that in a different color. Well, I'll leave it at black. We have our price up here. We have our quantity down here, right? We have our demand curve through here, okay? Now, on our demand curve, you'll notice that we're using some interesting verbiage when we talk about it, right? We're not calling it when there's a change. Like, let's say we have a spot on the graph, like right here, right up there. We don't call that... Uh, the actual amount that's demanded. We don't call it demand. We call it quantity demand. So it's not demand. It's quantity. Getting a little sloppy here. Trying to write with this uh, this stylus. It's uh, quantity demanded. Quantity demanded. So what does this mean, this kind of a uh, strange term? It is more than just semantics. Because what this... Uh, really comes down to is it is the quantity demanded means that we're moving along this curve here we're staying on the same curve we're not actually changing demand does that make sense so we're not actually going to change anything other than just where we are on the graph so if we go from here to here that is a change in the quantity demanded it's not actually a change in demand itself it's sometimes represented like this a Q and a D so that's the quantity demanded. That's not actually a change in demand. In order for us to have a change in demand, we have to do one of two things. And I'll do this in blue. We either increase. Remember, um, anytime we move to the right, we're increasing. And anytime we move to the left, we're decreasing. So unless we're doing one of these two things with our demand curve, we're not actually changing demand. How to get that arrowhead just right. We're not actually changing demand. We're changing the quantity demanded. Okay, so we're moving along this curve. That's the quantity demanded. And when we actually shift the curve, that's the actual demand. We're actually changing demand at that point. Now, what we want to do as business owners is uh, actually change demand. We don't just want to move along the same demand. So we're going to say, we're going to call this Jack. Jack is our business owner that you were or it's you or whoever and this right here represents the actual quantity demanded for whatever he is in the business of whatever his business is whatever he offers a selling this is the actual demand curve that he has now we know if jack ideally he will want to have a lot of control over his prices so i'm going to let's erase part of our uh part of our previous uh points here just to make this more clear, I will go through and um, that's our curve again. Oh, it's getting a little messy now. Okay, so that's, let me go ahead and erase that too. Got to get better at my, uh, my skills here. Okay, let's put our demand curve back up. Okay, that's actually could be better. All right, there's our demand curve. Now, let's go back here, and let's say that we're picking two points along our curve. All right, we're going to start right here would be, let's say, one price. We're going to call this P1, okay? Now, for P1, if we look at what happens, price one, we come over here, we hit our demand curve right here, and then we come down, 
and we have a certain amount of quantity demanded. We're going to call this Q1. Okay, that's Q1. Now let's say that Jack wants to raise his price. So he takes the P1 and he goes up here and he raises his price to P2. We're doing that in red. Now in order to determine what, what kind of price this is, what kind of difference this is going to have, we know how to go over and do this right from our last, uh, our last couple, uh, the last uh, couple episodes in the series. We come here to our quantity demanded and then we come down and we have now a Q2. This is our second quantity demanded value. Now, what, what elasticity is, is we know that because of the nature of the demand curve, we know that when the price raises, when we go from here, from P1 to P2, we are going to have some change, and the de it's going to be some decrease in the amount of quantity demanded, because that's the law of demand for normal goods, right? So there is going to be some decrease. We have the purple P1 and the red P2. So there is some demand, there is some change here. What elasticity is, and what the, um, the PED, the price elasticity of demand, what this is, is basically a measure of how much, how much of a difference, how much of a decrease are we really going to see here? Okay, when we go from this price to that price, how much of a difference are we going to see? Now, there are some uh, formulas to calculate this. So, I don't know if I should put it on here. Yeah, I'll go ahead and put it on here. Okay, so we have two basic formulas to calculate this. Okay, our first one is going to be, we're going to get into some fractions, but don't worry, they're going to be real easy, is price over quantity, okay, you guys can see that, right? Okay, times change, this is our delta sign, delta, anytime we see that triangle, it's delta, the change in, change in quantity over change in price. Okay, so price over quantity, and this right here, this is our initial uh, this is our initial uh, our initial price, our initial quantity times our change in uh, quantity over uh, change in price. So let's uh, plug some numbers in. Let's do some examples here of what would be uh, something that uh, we'd have. Let's say that we took. Um, we'll go over here. We're gonna st we're gonna do this over here. We're gonna say we went from uh, the price is over here. The quantity demanded is over here. Let's say we w we made a change in price from. Twenty dollars to twenty-five dollars, okay. And when Jack raised his price from twenty to twenty-five, so this is our twenty. This is our twenty-five. We had a change in quantity from. We'll make this easy: a hundred to fifty, okay. With these numbers, we can mathematically calculate what because we could take our price times our quantity. You know, like we take if you sold twenty-five at fifty, we can multiply twenty-five and fifty, twenty and a hundred, and we can mathematically calculate what these numbers are. But if we're going to put this into our formula, we'll use all you really need are these numbers to to see how this works. So price over quantity. Let's put this. Let's plug these numbers over here into our formula. So that would be the initial price, and let's do this over here. Our initial price of twenty dollars. Right, and over our initial quantity of a hundred, and now we're going to multiply that by the change in price over the change in quantity. In this case, we're looking at um, the change in price or the change in quantity. I'm sorry, the change in quantity over the change in price. So the change in quantity is fifty, and the change in price is five. Okay, so immediately we see some things we can do. We can easily simplify this. We come down here, 1, and we have 4, right? We come down here to 2, and we have 1. So what do we have over here? Well, we can actually simplify this even more. Okay, so we have 2 over 1 times 1, basically, right? We went over this fraction math. Hopefully that was all clear. You guys remember that? Wow, we're running out of time already. Okay, so what we end up with here, if we see this, is a... Uh, elasticity of two, basically. That means for every 1% change in price, we're going to have a 2% change in quantity demanded. All right, we're going to have to end this video, and we're going to continue this next time. Immediately, we're going to start right, right here where we, where we left off.